Thank you very much. So uh, I, I continue. And uh, in a sense, in the last, uh, last lecture, second talk, I just kind of omit one part of the story. That, that, that's something I, I want to talk, talk now. So let me look at the following situation. You have this three manifold whose boundary is sigma. And you have a uh, SO3 bundle on Y, so that its restrictions to sigma is this E of sigma. And W2, second stationary Hoyten class of E of sigma, is assumed to be the fundamental class. So that, that, that's the assumptions. And uh, then in this situation, we consider R of sigma. It's a space of flat connections. On, on this E of sigma. And uh, under these assumptions, this is a, a symplectic manifold, smooth. And this symplectic manifold is something we use. And then, if you consider this R of Y, or, uh, flat connections on, on Y, then uh, we have a map. Uh, from R of Y to R of Sigma. This is just a less, you have a connection here, you can just restrict it. And uh, if, you, if everything works uh, kind of gener generic, then this is a, this is a Lagrangian immersion. This means that the dimension of R of Y is half of the dimension of R of sigma. And if this uh, symplectic form of uh, R of uh, y restricted to this uh, uh, sigma, it, it is zero. So this is the de definition of the imagine. Uh, of course, this is the imagine. And of course, you need to perturb something to get this, this but it's a, um, a kind of in generic case, this is OK. So uh, now. Maybe let me express some, some examples that how this this goes. So the simplest, so you take this um, handle body, then it, its boundary is the uh, Riemann surface of genus G. But then, uh, then uh, let, let me remark that if you take this non-trivial associated boundary of sigma G, you cannot extend it to H of G. Because obviously W2 should, should be zero if it is extended. So we take this trivial bundle. On this handle body. But you know, this is not yet uh, this situation. In this situation, you should have some non-trivial SO3 bundle on your three manifold so that its, res its restriction is also non-trivial. Uh, that, that, that's because we need to uh, uh, assume, we want this R of sigma to be smooth, simple manifold. For the trivial bundles, you have called the trivial connections, and trivial connection is a singular point of this space of flat connections. So the simple topology has some difficulty. But, but so, so now, for, for this, so to make it kind of, so, so we need to do the following things. We take this T2, two dimensional toroid, and we take this six, e, uh, e of T2, this is a non trivial. SO3 bundle. It means that the Seifert Hoytel class is a fundamental class. There is unique such a bundle. Then we take this T2 cross 0, 1. And then uh, we, we put back this bundle here. And we take this uh, boundary, boundary connected sum of this with a handle body. So you have something, some handle body here. And it's, it's, uh, it's HG. And you have this toroid. And like this. And then you take this uh, boundary connected sum. So, so th th this is our y. And of course, this is, this is trivial. Uh, this is non-trivial. You can take a uh, connected sum of the bundles also. Then what do we obtain the following thing? So, 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 so we have this sigma y also. So you have, so, so you have this y whose boundary is uh, genus G plus 1 Riemann surface and T2. Right? After, after this uh, 
connected sum, you increase genus by one. And another, you have another boundary here. And then you have this uh, E of Y, so that its restrictions to both this sigma Z plus 1 and uh, on this E of Y on this T2 are non trivial. So th this is the situation we, we, we are thinking. And in this particular situation, if you, you take this R of Y, then it, it, it goes to this R of sigma g plus 1 and the product of r t2. But uh, actually, if you have non-trivial SO3 bundle over t2, there's exactly one flat connection on these bundles. So it is, it is very known that this is just one point. And uh, in this setting, uh, this is actually embedding, Lagrangian embedding. And uh, what we can say is the following things. This guy, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so this guy is related to this usual situation. So you have this SO3 actions on this uh, R of Y. So that you take this quotient, then that, that is somehow, uh, then you have this uh, uh, Hamiltonian SO3 actions. And this is identified. To the case of this um, flat connections of trivial SU2 bundle to on, on, on handle body to this uh, flat connection on this sigma g plus 1. So th this is actually the case of original Atia Freya conjecture working. But, uh, but this, one, this guy is singular. So slightly kind of, so we, we, we consider this guy. And actually there is something called a not Freya homology. But that is somehow related to this, replace this guy to, the, to, to this guy using this kind of construction. And this is I think by both Kronheim and Morocco. And as you see that in, in this case, it's this, this, this Lagrangian summary for is actually embedded. And that is the simpler case. But th this, is, this is the case, as, as you see, that you have a kind of tri trivial guy, and you increase, increase genus, and finally go to genus G. In some case, you, go, in some case you have some situation that you, have, you start from this. Uh, so this is something like uh, uh, on only kind of one side, all, 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 always genus is increasing. Can, yeah. can you repeat what the math says? This guy? Yeah. This is just a uh, restriction. Of flat connections. Like the left? Ah, because the right is just the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y has a, this two boundary component. So it's, if you restrict, you have these two flat connections. And this guy is unique. Because of the component. I mean, on, on T2, you calculate a dimension of flat. You, you have some very particular representation of G2 to this flat connection. So it's, it's kind of. Very known fact. And budget dimension is zero. So you, you know you have a more general case that you start from point and you, you have this kind of handle body type things. And you get some in a genus G. Then you, you, you shrink something to get the genus G prime and you, you and then you again go increase the genus so that you have this kind of genus G to prime and so somehow for, for this kind of Three manifold. This guy, this this kind of space Lagrangian is not embedding with kind of emergence. So if it's a handle body, then it is embedding, and you have some 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 situations that that this this Lagrangian embedding is emergent. So for example, the conditions. So suppose you have this boundary wide sigma, and some some component. It's a connected component. So that pi 1 of this sigma i subjects to pi 1 of y. So this handle body case is, 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 is such a case. Then 
uh, then uh, R of y m is m embedded in R of sigma. So in, in the case this, this, this is subjective, then you, have a, you are embedding, so it is, it's simpler. And for the Flair theory, it's just a kind of usual embedded Lagrangian Flair theory. And the Maslow index is 4, so you can use Young and O's version of Flair homology to define it. But in, the, in this case, so, so you consider that you have some, some, some handle here, and the fundamental group is not subjective. You have a genus bigger, smaller, and bigger. So, so in this case, this guy is not actually a, a, a embedding. You have some kind of emergence. So, so you, have, you, have, you should do something more in that case. So I can just say the following things. So if you, you have this, not, not only R of sigma, but you can, in this particular case, you have this R of sigma and R of y. And it's embedded. Oh, sorry. Oh. Have some noises here. Uh-huh. So if it's embedded, then uh, play homology Ry1, Ry2 is defined by O. So we, we don't have any extra data to define play homology. It means that uh, you just count. Describe this, you get, then you get this, this flare as boundary operator, and its square is zero, and the, under the assumption that this is embedded. This is because of monotonicity. So in, 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 in this case, we can prove that this, so in this case, this, this SO3 version of the flare conjecture means that this flare homology It's isomorphic to this instant of homology of this y1, y2. And so so th th this is a kind of version of this uh, things. And this is proved by, uh, so th there's a paper we wrote. Then this is proved by this, like, like and uh, Max Lipiansky. And myself. So, so th this case is all already written. But something so I, I, I need to mention is the following things. If R of Y is only immersed, we have a set of intersections. Then, then you have a trouble to define free homology of R Y1. There is some, some, some difficulty to, to define this. Uh, uh, to define this uh, player homology. And, and basically, the reason is the following kind of things. I don't want to, I cannot, I cannot say the detail, but the main, main, main point that to prove this, uh, this, this, this property, we need to use some kind of modular space of a uh, strip, and we need to study compactifications. And the bad, 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 compactific so bad ob object is something like this. So you have this, so Li is in R of sigma. And this L1 and L2, and you have this uh, uh, self-intersections. And uh, infinity may have this kind of thing. So th th this guy is something like you have a self-intersection point, and you have some disk which kind of bounds, or, or, and, and there are switching here. And this kind of object is called a uh, uh, teardrop. And if this teardrop exists, then this boundary square is zero, may not be satisfied. So in the case of this, uh, uh, in the case of this, um, in the case when this uh, uh, Lagrangian sum manifold is not embedded but it's immersed, you have some phenomenon like this, which, which gives you a difficulty to define Lagrangian flare theory. And, uh, and uh, Lagrangian flare theory, we, we have uh, worked out with O Otaono, Uh, it's not in this immersed case, but you have some, some similar phenomenon, which is called curvature. It, that, that is not a mon no, non-monotone case. Then, then we introduce the notion of bounding cochain to correct it. And in this, in this situation, then, then, then it is uh, generalized by Akaho and Joyce to the immersed case. 
And if, if, so even if you assume monotonicity in an imagined case, you have this teardrop, which gives a difficulty to define the Lagrangian flare theory. So I want to write down one theorem, which is a part of the four things, which is kind of closely tied to this phenomenon. So um, suppose, so this is uh, something uh, I, I'm supposed to write with I covered IV, but it's not uh, to be written. So this is, I mean, in this case, this is, this is, this is written. But in, in this case, it is not yet written. And I think we can write it in the near future, but we finish. So we have this kind of case. Yes. You have this, uh, but it's immersed. Then there exists a canonical choice of bounding for chain. Of R of Y, and uh, uh, the, the, I want to explain what what this means. So uh, we we go, so suppose you have this inverse Lagrangian monotone. Must. Then I want to consider this Freya's chain complex of L with itself. And this is actually a homology of L, R sigma L. Maybe kill that better. This is, this is by, by definition. I mean, in, in, in general, if you have this, if you have, you have that pair of Lagrangian sum manifold, which is transversal, then this is just a, a free abelian group generated by intersection point. But in this case, of course, this is not transversal to itself. So you, have, you should take homology group. And uh, you consider this homology group of the fiber product. This is a L tilde itself plus somehow switching part. And the switching is something like a pair PQ of L tilde cross L tilde. So that P is different from Q, but IP is different, is equal to IQ. So this, this L is something like a PPP, P, P, which P, 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 then this is, of course, contained in the fiber product. And you have this different pair of this different P and Q. The simplest example is the following things. So you have this, this kind of Lagrangian sum manifold, R2. Then you take fiber product. In this case, you have this S1 plus two points. So S1 is just you have a PP on each point of SQ. But here, you have the choice of PQ and the QP. So you have this, this, this point, you have two, two points coming this this point. So that is P and Q. So you have PQ and QP. So in this particular example, you have this original S1 plus two points corresponding to each set of intersections. So that, that's in general the case. You have a immense Lagrangian sum manifold whose self intersection is uh, transversal. Then this fiber product is uh, L, L itself and the switching part. So you look at this. Then this Freya chain complex is a Freya homology of L itself plus uh, two generators for each self intersection. And in this fact, we need these two extra generator for self-intersection uh, is necessary for immersed flare theories kind of, uh, studied by this Akaho and Joyce's paper very systematically. So now, I want to say that in these cases, the bounding cochain is, is very much a special thing. In this case, so suppose we are in this situation. So it's, it's, it's R of Y, which is immersed to R of sigma. Then the bounding cochain we have has some special form of B P Q P Q and the P Q is an element of this R R R Y times R Y so that uh, 
maybe a b p q does not look so much a b no no alpha beta so that you restrict alpha to sigma is equal to beta restricted to sigma and alpha is not equal to beta so you, you mean so this is this this switching path so it is something something like sections. And if you look this more geometrically, it is the following things. So you have this uh, three manifold, y, whose boundary is sigma. Then you have these two flat connections. This is flat, flat connections on y, which, uh, which, is diff which are different. I mean, it's not gauge equivalent on y. But if you restrict to sigma, you have, you have the same flat connections. So if, 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 if this fundamental group is subjective, this, this is impossible. But the fundamental group is not subjective, this is a kind of completely possible situation. And the, uh, the boundary contain is something like, a, if you take such a, such a pair of these two flat connections which go to the same thing, then th this guy is some integer. So, so the candidate of bounding contain is this kind of finite sum, finite sum of this uh, b, b, b alpha beta. So for each self-intersection point, you have cho two choices, and you take finite, back finite dimensional abelian group over these three things. And we, we take this, this element, b of y. And the property we want to b of y is, uh, is, uh, is something like this. So, so let, if you have this guy, then, uh, then so, so you have this kind of b y1 and b y2. Then, then I, I think I, I mentioned this kind of thing before, but we, we consider this kind of situations. So this is uh, r y1, and this is r y2, and if this x and y, then you know for the boundary operator, originally we consider only this kind of things. Only this kind of strip. So that, that is the original free as boundary operator. You have two Lagrangian sum manifold and two intersection point, and you consider strip so that uh, uh, th th this, this is a boundary value. And he, but but then we, we here consider this kind of strip. So so, so you know this, this, this there is a kind of switching here. If you go from this side, then then then, then you, you switch to the other branches, and you have this you, you can do this infinitely many times. And also on another side. Then we, we count this, but you have, uh, so you have this kind of b, b, uh, b alpha 1, beta 1, b alpha 2, beta 2, and b alpha 3, beta 3. So we are given this bounding cochain. So it means that for each strip, we have this uh, uh, integers. That, that is given by this bounding cochain, yeah? How do you, how do you I mean, it, it is, the claim is that there exists such a by. And I, 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 I explain how, how we obtain it. But this is, I, I'm just explaining what kind of property it is supposed to satisfy. So we count this. This sharp with weight. In this case, it's b alpha 1, beta 1, b alpha 2, beta 2, b alpha 3, beta 3. So you have three self-intersections. And on each self-intersection, you, you fix your weight, your weight. Then you count this configuration with this way. So you can do it for arbitrary many self-intersections. Then, then this, is, this, this, this gives a kind of deformation. So original player boundary operator is deformed to, to, to this. So you have this by 1, by 2. So you have given these two some, some configurations, then you can deform your boundary operator by, by, by including all the count of this guy. And the, the, the important claim is that if by1, by2 satisfies some equations, so-called the molar Carlton equations, then this guy square is zero. So this is a kind of general story of this 
deformation of NPD structures. Uh, at the beginning, you have some kind of structures so that the boundary square is not zero. Then you want to correct, correct it to get the actual, actual boundary operator. And in this particular case, you do it by including this uh, um, switching of the script. And, uh, and this bounding cosine gives a uh, particular way how to count this kind of pictures. So that is the definition of bounding cosine. And you can define some kind, some kind of monocultural carton equations for the bounding cosine. And if the monocultural carton equation is satisfied, then this is actually an honest bounding operator. So that, that's the story of this uh, bounding cosine, and which plays the kind of important role in, uh, to include this uh, emerged cases. So let me give a very cheap example. So uh, example of how this bounding cosine works. So suppose you have a Y whose boundary is a, a union of two T2. Then, um, then what happens is that R of Y is imagined to R of T2 cross R of T2. But this is actually a point. So you, you, you are three. Uh, so what, what it means that in this case, you have a T2. You have a T2 and you have a Y. And you have any, any flat connections here, or of just non-trivial bundles. But the restriction is uh, some flat connection on the this non-trivial band of T2, but actually there is a unique such a, such a thing. So all, all of them have the same boundary value. So what is B in this case is? So, so, so in this case, this uh, less Lagrangian imagery is rather trivial. So we have uh, finitely many points. This is R of Y. And R of sigma is just one point. So all of this has a kind of goes to this point. So this is suddenly imagined, but it's as a trivial, trivial one. Then, what is BYG? So, so, so switching, in this case, is something like a pair PQ, pair alpha beta, on this uh, um, R of Y, and uh, which is different. And we take this uh, uh, Z over alpha beta, right? Yeah, but Two, two different pair, which, which go to the same thing. That, that is switching in this very trivial example. Then, B is something like this, right? B alpha, beta, alpha, beta. It's something like a matrix. We have zero. So this is, this is a matrix, right? Because you have a, for, for each pair of, of this alpha and beta you get an integer. So if it is order, if it's order over R Y is N, so this is a kind of N N matrix. So bounding chain in this case is just to give this particular bounding matrix, but, but, but this matrix. But actually there is a degree issue. So you, you have a non-zero non element only in some particular degree. But then the, in this case is, Mona Carlton equations, let me write it B. Mona Carlton equations is just a B square is zero. This matrix square is zero is, is, is actually a Mona Carlton equation. So, so in this case, uh, yeah, so in this case, um, yeah. So, so what, what happens? So, in the, so we, we, we consider the following things. You have this, this y, and you have t2, you have this y. Then you have this uh, t2 cross r. So this is y prime. And you grew y and y prime. You have this uh, uh, maybe z. And, and then, in, in this case, the theory says that uh, uh, Instant of free homology of Z is actually this kernel B divided by image B. So B is a bounding cosine, but you, your bounding cosine you may regard as a kind of matrix. So it's a, it's a linear map. So B is something like a linear map from this uh, D to the power N, D to the power N, and N is a number of flat connections. 
on y. And you know, if you glue them together, then all flat connection, all, all n flat connection gives a flat connection on this z. And then on, on z, you have this boundary operator, Flair's boundary operator. And this boundary contains exactly that Flair's boundary operator, so instantum Flair homology. So, uh, so actually, this boundary contains, remembers all the information, uh, gauge theory information on y. And what one can put in, in this, but, but this, there is something non trivial because, you know, the, the, there is a self defined morphism of T2. So this gluing has infinitely many different possibilities. And this gluing theorem exactly means that any choice of different morphism between T2 and T2, you get the same free homology. But this, this, this fact is basically proved by Brahman and Donaldson. If you see the Freya's memory at volume, Brahman and Donaldson proved some, some, some theorems. It implies that regardless of this gluing, you have the same free homology. And in this case, we get the flat that theorem, so that, uh, so that this uh, um, bounding cochain is exactly this Freire's boundary operator. So, so that, that is this how this bounding cochain thing works. And you know, you have two, two extremes. So this is one extreme that, uh, um, that this um, symplectic geometry has uh, basically no information. It's just one, symplectic manifold is one point. So there's no pseudo homo curve. And then, then all the gauge theory information is just remembered by this bounding cochain. That is a matrix. And on, on the other extreme, if, if, if this is embedded, then there is no bounding cochain, and simple geometry remember everything. So in, in, in general, you have some intermediate stage. You have self intersections, you have a Lagrangian sum manifold. So you can consider a pseudo homo curve on R of sigma, and also you have a bounding cochain, which remembers some other information. And they all together give us this uh, uh, information. So that the second theorem, I want to mention that this is, again, I have to prove it with this result of diving. It's the following. Suppose you have this y1 equal to sigma minus uh, y2. Then uh, instant of real homology of this uh, glued thing is isomorphic to uh, Lagrangian free homology of this uh, y1, no, no, r y1, together with this bounding cochain, and i y2, together with this bounding cochain. So this is the theorem in the general situations. And in, 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 a, in a very special case of this uh, boundary, the t2, it is exactly this statement. Just a matrix B, which is the bounding cochain, it gives this uh, uh, instant homology of the glued object. And in another, in, in another case is that these two are embedded, then this is zero. So this is the usual uh, O's, uh, Younging O's free homology. That is isomorphic to instant of free homology. So that's the theorem we have uh, uh, Daimi and Piaski and myself, we prove. That, that's already written. So, so, so these two are something like a, 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 some part of the theory of free conjecture. And then, OK, so now, now I want to explain some ideas how to obtain this bounding cochain. So that's somehow new new part of this thing. So then it doesn't depend on the boundary cochain. It's like an additional data. Yes. And it can then choose it differently. So uh, the claim is that using gauge theory, mm -hmm. you, you you obtain boundary cochain. So the, the theorem says that like there exists such b y one and b y two. Yes. Oh, okay. So why any y one? Why any three manifold which bound sigma? Mm -hmm. You can use gauge theory to define bounding cochain. Uh -huh. And that is the invariant after gauge transformations okay. of this three manifold. Mm -hmm. And then uh, gluing theorem takes this form. Okay. You know, for, the, for, for example, this, this B, matrix B, it still may depend. It's a kind of a chain map, a boundary operator of some chain complex. But after chain homotopy, it's unique. So that's something like a gauge equivalent classes of bounding cochain. But so now, now, now the, the question is how to obtain this bounding cochain. And this, this, this bounding cochain should have uh, information on the gauge theory on Y. If you see this, 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 this situation, oh, oh, you know, the simple topology has nothing because T2, cross, uh, T2 is very much trivial. But you uh, have a gauge theory here, and that, that, that gives this, this B. So the bounding cochain should, should be obtained using gauge theory. So, so let me recall what, what is this bounding cochain supposed to be. So by 
should be something like sum of b alpha beta alpha beta and alpha beta is a flat connection of sigma which are different but uh, its restrictions no no why its restriction to sigma is is the same so you, you have you have some pair of flat connection on three manifold whose boundary gives the same flat connection then something that we want to find want to find B alpha beta, which is an integer. And there are several ideas, and I first explain one idea, which uses much analysis, and this idea still does not work. And later on, I will, I will somehow explain another method, which somehow go around this analysis to use more algebraic things. But probably this uh, 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 analysis thing is a bit, uh, kind of easier to understand, and I want to first explain it. So first, let me show that. So we, we take y, and the boundary y is sigma. So we, we, we make it a bit bigger, sigma plus uh, 0 infinity. And this is y hat. So y, y has a boundary, but y hat has a kind of end. End is a kind of product type. Then we consider this uh, uh, y hat cross R. The uh, tau is a parameter. This is a 4 manifold. And we have a uh, bundle on it. Then we, consider, then we consider this A anti self so connection A of this bundle. A of this bundle, which satisfies this equation. This is the ASD equation. That's somehow related to this prayer theory. But then I, I want to have some, uh, define some uh, boundary, con uh, asymptotic boundary conditions. So let me recall, we have this alpha and beta flat connection on y, which coincides on, on the same as we a. So the condition is the following things. So we consider this uh, a and restrict y hat cross tau. And then go to tau go to plus infinity and tau go to minus infinity. And we require this, this converges to alpha at tau go to minus infinity and converges to beta at tau go to plus infinity. So we have some situation like this. Maybe I can write. So you have, have y is something like this. And your a is here. And if tau go to minus infinity, it combines to alpha. And if tau go to plus infinity, it combines to beta. So that's very similar to usual Fourier, instant on Fourier homology. But only difference is that uh, y, you, you, if y is compact, then counting this gives a Fourier's boundary of beta in a, in, a, in a usual instant on Fourier homology. But uh, we have this end. And then the another condition is the following things. You take A and then restrict sigma cross tau cross T. So, so T, T is, so, so what, T is this parameter. And then let T go to e plus infinity. Then it converges to A. So what does it mean? That, so you have this, any point you go this way, then you, have a, you, you end up with some connections on sigma. That is exactly this connection, A. So you know this alpha in, in the limit is a and beta in the limit is a. So you have somehow everywhere in this side is, is a, and you have two different ways to extend it. And then you, you, you may co try to consider this this boundary boundary problem to solving by ASD equations. This this is some kind of a, 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 a problem, but this is somehow to, a, very different from usual usual uh, gauge theory things because. Uh, Usually, gauge theory has a product end, and uh, this has a kind of two-dimensional end. And uh, studying this, this, this equation is actually harder than the usual things. And I want to write down the conjecture. Conjecture is the following. It's a moduli space. Of such A has a virtual fundamental chain. I say it's a conjecture because I, I, I cannot prove it. So but this means that somehow you have some full package, so that some compactness, regularity, Lambert singularity theory, Fred Holm theory. And, uh, and, and what is done here is uh, there, there is a uh, like Gangu Boxu, he 
proved, I think, uh, what he proved? Yeah, removable singularity, or, I mean, compactness, so mainly. Compactness, et cetera, for this modular space, but not for the whole theory. Still, he's working on it. So, yeah, let me, let me write one. So to, 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 to study this, uh, uh, this, this, this modular space is actually analytically very hard. <coughs> and this, his paper is uh, archive 1007. Each word to one. proved this. But, and, 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 and then, uh, then the, the B of Y should be the following things. B of y should be the finite sum of this alpha beta, of this number of, of this modular space. Let me write it alpha beta. Of this alpha beta. And we count it uh, on only the case dimension is zero. So this, this, has a flat, this is supposed to have a flat Holm theory. So for each alpha beta, this modular space has some very defined dimensions. And the uh, budget fundamental chain means that you have some perturbation theory so that uh, you can count its order. And the conjecture is that this, the, this coefficient of the abundant chain is just a count of this modular space, or rather difficult modular space. And, uh, and I think this Gang Box 2 may come halfway. And if, if he is successful, probably one can prove, prove this in that way. And also, Another theorem I, may, as I stated can be proved in that way. That's more natural way, in a sense, in a sense a natural analytic way. But uh, as I mentioned, that this, this, this uh, analysis of this particular modular space is harder. And uh, I, I don't, I, I, at least I, I, I cannot prove it, so it's, it's still open. So now I want to explain some, some other way. So I, I go around the problem. Go around the difficult analysis. Yeah. Just, can you explain like what in pictures why this satisfies Markov? Um. Supposing all Fred Holm is. A okay. Yeah. It's something like this. So you you have a picture something like this, and then you have some, some this kind of so. Yeah. It's it, it hard to write, but you have something like this. And things come and then one can so and another thing's coming. So if if you regard this as a kind of you know, you have this uh, interval cross uh, zero one cross r. And you scale it so that three dimensional part is very small. Then this guy is some kind of bubble which you find here. And if you make it big, you have a second bubble. And if you look at this, come carefully, you have something, some, something called uh, something like this. One bubble, and then there's a second bubble. So the, the fact is, fact is that it's complicated, you have to conform change. And if you do, do this, this, this conform change. Then you, you find that there are some something which bounds this uh, bounds this 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 picture. That's a, that's a proof of moral quantum. And another way to prove it just just to show that if you, have, if you use this b of y, then this this square is zero. And and, and that, that, that's somehow related to the proof of this 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 cohomology is isomorphic to the instant homology. And what, what, we, what we observe here is the following thing. So suppose you have two y1 and y2 here. And then if you have this uh, t from this sigma. So you, 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 you consider this instantum player theory for this uh, y. But you have this yt. yt is a y1 cap uh, zero, t, 0 t sigma, 0 t cross sigma, and y2. So you have this guy, one parameter family of metrics on this three manifold. And you let t go to infinity, 
and you scale it, then, then this, this is a kind of length zero one. And this part gets smaller and smaller. Then if you consider instanton, if you consider gauge theory on yt cross r, then if you look what happening, is that you have several, so, so here you see the pseudo homo curve. That is the main part of the Flair theory. And you will see something here bubbling off. And you look, if you kind of scale this part, then the solution is some, some, some of this moduli space. If you scale this boundary. So it means that the, if, you can, if you find that this, this instant on Flair homology, and you consider the limit when t goes to infinity, then you have this uh, usual pseudo homo curve equations plus some bubbles which lies on the left and right hand side. And if you look at this, if you scale the bubble, then you get the element of this modular spaces. So this, this means that uh, if you use this uh, bounding cochain, then, then instant of Flair homology is equal to this uh, corrected Flair homology, Lagrangian Flair homology. And th 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 this implies that, in particular, th this, this one square is zero. So it, so it, it somehow implies that this is a bounding cochain. So that, 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 that's somehow the way we, we achieve, the, uh, arrive this kind of modular spaces. But it, it's rather hard to, I mean, it, it kind of scaling is a bit nasty, but, but uh, you, you can do it. But the problem is uh, kind of, this, this is not a conformal invariant, I mean, because you have a sigma factor. So if you have a conformal change, then the sigma gets bigger, bigger or small. And uh, you need very careful analysis. OK, so now, now, so this is an analytic way. And uh, I, I had to, I, I was thinking about this kind of thing. And there are some parallel problems. So I, I, maybe I don't have a time, but there are parallel problems for Lagrangian correspondence. In Lagrangian correspondence. And this analytic approach, Approach in the case of Lagrangian correspondence is by Wilhelm and uh, Bottoman. And uh, this, this moduli space is something they call, uh, correspond to something they call a uh, uh, finite bubble. There is something, there are some moduli space of finite bubbles, and uh, if you consider, if you can take analogy of Lagrangian correspondence and uh, three manifold with boundary, then this moduli space I have just described is some moduli space which they call finite bubble. Probably I don't have time to explain it. And in that, in that case, again, Bottoman and Wilhelm prove this compactness and remember singularity. But still, um, Fred Holm theory is a problem. And they, they, they prove this kind of thing maybe five years ago or some things. And the Fred Holm theory is still working, but it's not yet done. So the, the similar story on the Lagrangian correspondence, you have similar problems, but it's not yet solved. And uh, so, so I, I was thinking that kind of things. And at some point, so I, I, I was thinking, uh, beginning at, uh, to try to understand this analysis. But then it seems rather hard. So, uh, but at some point, I just found that actually we can go around the analysis. So we don't need to do this study, this hard moduli space directly, but we can somehow cheat or shortcut to do some algebraic argument. So that's something I want to explain. So that is the following thing. OK, so now suppose this boundary y is sigma. Then, uh, then uh, we have this uh, category. This is the NVT category, whose object is actually a Lagrangian emergence. Then, then something I want to claim is that this guy, this gives a, a so, but this is a so-called curved NVT category. So what curved means, so we have this M0. Uh, M0 lambda 0 to um, CF LL. And uh, all, all, I mean, AVT category I explained until yesterday is something like a nut curve. And what this means, this means the following things. M1 
m1 x is not actually 0. It is m2 x m, m0 1 plus uh, m2 m0 1 x. So your category, infinity category is curved means that uh, m1 square has some trouble to be 0. And in this case, in, in our particular situations, this m0 1 is the following thing. It situated this teardrop. So in a case, this m0 1 is a uh, CPQ, PQ, and this PQ is switching, so something like PQ, and we count, count this kind of teardrop, and it, it, give, it, it gives some integer, and this M01 is exactly this uh, uh, counting of teardrop, and as I mentioned, that this, this, this teardrop gives an obstruction. So that is the, the curved AFG category. And for something I want to do is just, uh, yeah. So something I want to do using the three manifold is the following things. So here this three manifold. Then there exists light A infinity module over, uh, over F of sigma. This is an algebraic uh, observation. And this is an observation which can have gauge theory. So how we can do it? So what is like an infinity module? So suppose that L is a uh, immersion to L of sigma. Then I want to define CF of Y, L. This is uh, actually P. If I, this is uh, alpha in uh, R of Y, P in L tilde. So that uh, alpha sigma is IP and G alpha P. So what it is? So this is a finite rank area group. So its generator is the following thing. So you have this uh, L tilde, which go to R sigma. And you have this uh, R of Y. So you have this connection R, alpha, which is strict to some flat connections. And you have this P here. And which goes to this this guy. So this is just this kind of pairs. And the boundary operator is the following things. So boundary operator is, is, is something I think in the first day or second day I explained this mixed moduli space. Going back to the Piansky. So you consider this guy. So suppose you have this alpha P beta q on this, uh, on, on the, on this conditions. Then we have this, uh, we consider this guy. And uh, you have this a and uh, u. And uh, a is a uh, anti self dual connection. On, uh, ah, I'm sorry, is a connection on y cross r again, and u is a map to from 0, 1 to, to cross r to r of sigma. And uh, a is self dual, and self dual. And uh, u is uh, holomorphic. So th this is the equations. You have a pair of unsafe that connection and homework curve. And so this is something like matching conditions. So what, what was it? Uh, A restricted to sigma cross tau is equal to u zero tau. So here, if you restrict A here, it gives the flat connections, which is the value of, at, at u, of u. And uh, u, 1 tau is contained in this L. And, uh, and a, a, U, when tau go to plus infinity, gives a beta Q. And uh, when tau go to minus infinity, goes alpha P. So you have this alpha P beta Q. So you have some kind of a situation that you have a mixture of gauge theory and uh, shield homework curve. And counting this gives a boundary operator. So counting this gives a boundary operator. 
Ini tiga besar bawang terpulih itu. Boundary to the CF. I think this is something I explained yesterday. Uh, first or second talk, I forgot. But then, but then we can extend it. So this is this this can be extended. This is also extend can be extended to, for example, CF y l1, CF l1 l2 to CF y l2. So this is a light module structure. So you have arbitrarily many things here. So this is called the infinity module. And I want to, so, so, but then, then there is one uh, simple thing. So let me consider the case when L is happened to be R of Y. It's, it's a certain dimension sum and form. Then CF, R, uh, CF Y L is uh, R of Y, higher product R of Y, R of sigma. And in this case, it's a homology group. And this guy is a homology group of R of Y plus switching. The switching is generated by alpha beta on, on the sphere of R of Y, which is different, and uh, its restrictions is the same. And what is important here is that, so this is somehow, you have a switching part, and uh, you have a switching part and this uh, diagonal part. And you have a one, which is an H0 out of one. And then we, we, have, we can prove the following lemma, which is rather easy. If you take this, uh, so, 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 so this, this, is, this is called the N0, and this is called uh, N01. Uh, N1, yeah, N1. First of all, n0 of 1 is 0 modulo positive energy. It kind of, you have a filtration, and its reading of the term is, is, is 0. And the second is that you go from x to n1, 1, x, and this is an isomorphism. And I, 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 I know another lemma, but, but uh, we will explain what it is. So another lemma is the following things. Lemma two. This is, this is somewhat geometry, but the second lemma is purely algebraic. This one, two implies that there exists unique B such that um, from K and K one BBB it's zero. And uh, this second lemma is a purely algebraic lemma. This, this one is something called a cyclic element. It's something like a, a generator. And uh, these two, you prove this, these two algebraic properties, you can uniquely find B bounded co chain. So that somehow one is, one is a, this is actually by definition boundary B. One is a cycle. So originally one is not a cycle, but uh, you can uniquely find one chain which makes this one to be a cycle. So this is a pure algebraic lemma, and uh, the proof of this second lemma is actually easy. You, you look at these equations, and you, you solve this equation in a kind of inductively on the energy. So this is a kind of equation, and this, this is two conditions. You can is is rather immediate that you can solve this equation. It's purely algebra. And what is uh, why this 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 uh, um, first lemma is correct? Is so, something like uh, you, you know, calculation of n is rather difficult. It it it, it uses a lot of modular spaces and nonlinear PDE. <laughs> but if you just use uh, there are some easy component of the modular space, which is just a constant map. So constant map is a special case of the solutions. And if you just see the constant map. Then you get this. So the constant map contributes something, and the constant map exactly means this second formula. So you, you using that very simple part, part of this modular space, constant map, you can prove this two lemma. And then using this, you can prove the existence of bounding quotient. And th this is unique. 
So, so in a sense, uh, and uh, actually, originally, one try to kind of see, uh, one, uh, originally, actually, th these properties are somehow necessary to prove some basic property of this. Uh, and then, then uh, I, I was thinking about how, how, why did, did, what kind of property of this bounding coaching and coming from analysis satisfies. And then I found that this, this equation is likely to be satisfied for the analytic solutions, for the modularized, for the bounding coaching and coming from analysis. But then, actually, very ni nicely, that this, this equation just algebraically characterizes the bounding coaching B. So it means that you don't really need to go dif difficult analysis, but just solve this algebraic equation. And then this B should be the bounding cotient we are looking for. So just, just prove by, by proving these two bounding cotients, you obtain B of Y. And then by some uh, kind of cobalism type argument, you can prove this uh, two theorems. So, so in a sense, uh, somehow, yeah, I mean, direct analytic approach is more intuitive why this kind of thing is correct. But uh, if you know this, uh, the property of these things, then you can forget how you get it, and you can just, just use this lemma to get this bounding cotient. That is uh, the way we obtain B of Y and prove these theorems. Okay, but maybe it is it's a t time. So uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, the solution, the, the equations, you say they are algebraic, but uh, does it contain any geometry inside, like the equation? I, I mean, so, so this, this NUI contains a lot of geometric information. That, that's a kind of Lipiansky's modular spaces. So the coefficient is defined by this geometric, geometric constructions. And uh, using this NUI, then you use the B. So B contains a lot of geometric information through NUI. And uh, NUI is a kind of constructed by a very transcendental way calculating the modular space. And the explicit calculation of NUI is almost impossible. You have to calculate, you have to find many solutions, many modular spaces of these uh, mixed equations. And uh, if we know all of NUI, then BI is determined. So in that sense, BI somehow contains so many informations about this uh, mixed modular spaces. But the fact is that we can kind of depack this NUI information to one, to single this BI. So that uh, kind of, you know, you, you can correct and get the uh, correct for their homology. Yeah. Does this uh, approach look like in the sort of trivial example when you have uh, only one connection on? Yes, the yes. So what does this approach look like? Sort of like how, how does it? I think in, 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 that, in that case, you try to calculate NY. It is something like you have a torus boundaries. So you have exponential decay. So y cross r, on y cross r, you have a usual instant type modular spaces. And bi is something like, uh, you know, exactly this boundary operator. Oh, you have this uh, boundary y is t2. So you take it, uh, make it the n. So suppose that boundary y is t2 cross t2. Then we consider this, uh, and maybe we have this t2. I mean, so in, in the case of this direct analytic cases, you take this y hat, then, then we take constant y hat plus r. And in this case, exponential decay is easy, because this is unique. So you have this alpha and beta. You have this unique solutions. Then, then you can just construct chain complex. And you look at these definitions. Bi is exactly this boundary operator by, by, by this kind of equations. Uh, I mean, the di direct constructions. And, and then you can, you can just reflect it in this, in this way. If you have some, then, then one can see that uh, that's, uh, that's the same thing. Uh -huh. like, what does this uh, sort of more algebraic approach look like? What does what is this NK operator, what does it count? Uh, is it and, and, something very simple? And, and K operator in this case is, is uh, uh, probably higher one does not exist. Only N1 or N2 or something. But you know, it's, it's basically calculate something like uh, if you have this, uh, you have these two alpha betas, and then you calculate this kind of thing. This is a, 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 a zero or something like that. So it, it's related to this algebraic thing in, in the rather directly. In this case, probably you can, you can see what's happening very directly. Yeah. Uh, 
because here everything is exponential decay, so you don't have an analytic problem. But the, the, everything is finite. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, all, 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 all I think in the T2, you have a big ball of T2 with non trivial connections, then it's exponential decay to, to unique flat connections. So uh, after finitely many distance, everything is exponential decay. And the Lipiansky's model space is somewhat different. Then you have this take that runs. So how it is related is a bit non-trivial. But the, the way in this case is to understand that you can just move this longer and longer. Then, then you know, for each, for each kind of t, if you, you, you can make it longer and longer. But then the bounding equation b, you obtain this way, it actually does not change so much. It's after gauge equivalence. And then you consider its limit. Then you, have, you, you, you get, come back to this analytic approach. So in that way, I think one can actually prove that this, this, this way, you have the same thing as analytic, analytic thing up to gauge equivalence. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so you, like, when a few minutes ago, you were talking about like polymorphic curve and the connection to a connection. And now it's like to the same uh, stuff. Is there any connection between like the first approach that doesn't work and this one? And, and, and so, 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 some, some, some heuristic argument shows that if this first approach actually works, then it gives the same thing as this pre approach, up to gauge transformations. That, that's an ex expected connection. So you just believe everything. You can just this, everything like a cobordism type argument. Then, 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 then this should be gauge equivalent. But, uh, but uh, this, this, uh, the proof of this is a kind of as hard as the proof that first approach works. So if you are optimistic that this kind of analysis gives a B of Y, then it should be gauge equivalent to something which you obtain from algebraic things. Uh, it's, it's more of an analytic question. You, uh, very often you, you take, uh, for example, sigma and you multiply by zero to infinity. Yes. And then you have a, a, an asymptotic condition that yes. converges to something. Yes. So why not multiply by zero one and and uh, and pose boundary condition? Boundary condition is much harder. Yes. So why why is it much harder? Uh, because uh, you, you know you think mo mo most theory, then you have a gradient line equation so from zero to one. Then the, then the boundary value, you know, it, it's very arbitrary. So I mean, it's an analogy, analogy, of, analogy of most theory. So you have a finite major manifold M. Now, then you take the equations, current F. Then if this L is just, from that, for example, that one, then I don't know what are good boundary conditions. And if this is uh, all four real line, so if we have something like four real line, and if you satisfy these equations, then uh, plus minus infinity lies in this critical point of set of F. So you can use this critical point as a boundary conditions. But for the finite ranks, there's no way to, to, to do this, this kind of thing. So in, in a flare theory, this, this, this Infinite length is much more natural because of the somehow analogy of both homology. Thank you.